Rejoice, you saints, in the presence of the Lamb. A kingdom has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather in joy to celebrate these sacred mysteries bequeathed to us by our Lord, through which he continues to minister the grace of redemption to his people. We honor two of the early martyrs of the church, Nereus and Achilles. They were members of the elite Praetorian Guard who's, uh, who acted as a bodyguard for the emperor. These two men converted to Jesus, began to follow his way, and resigned from the Praetorian Guard. But they were arrested for uh, dereliction of duty and were put to death as an example to others who might uh, want to resign from that absolute loyalty to the emperor. The relation between one's loyalties to the Lord and to one's government have, of course, been issues throughout the history of the church. But for a Christian, if there ever is a conflict, then we know where our first loyalty must be. So let us ask the intercession of these saints as we now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the glorious feast day of your blessed martyrs, Nereus and Achilles, gladden us, we pray, O Lord. For as they boldly confessed the passion and resurrection of your only begotten Son, you led them to shed their costly blood in a glorious death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race 
to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed. And he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them. But some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Heaven, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. <clears throat> Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be seated. How is it that we come to recognize Jesus? 
his voice speaking to us in all of Scripture, in the Old Covenant, through the prophets, in the New Covenant, in his own voice. How is it that we come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread? To assert with confidence that what we receive in the sacrament is he himself under the appearance of food and drink, but it is he. How is it that we grow in our understanding of the faith and our love for the faith? How is it that we are motivated to do so? How is it that we desire to spend time with the Lord in liturgical and in private prayer? How is it that we are motivated to show compassion towards those in need and motivated to come to their assistance. It is all through the gift of the spirit of truth. The spirit forms the church. The spirit gives us Christ, unites us to him. The Spirit gives us the gift to faith and awakens us to faith. The Spirit sustains us in faith and helps us to grow in it. The Spirit is the lifeblood of the church, her soul, her vitality. Her God. The Spirit speaks not on his own, but only what Christ has spoken. As in turn, Christ speaks not on his own, but only what the Father has given him. The Spirit therefore unites us, not simply to himself, but to the Son and to the Father, incorporating us into the very life of God, which, who is an, an eternal exchange of love among persons. This is the motivation behind Paul's ministry. As he goes to Athens, the cultural capital of the Eastern Mediterranean, the home of Plato and Aristotle, Greek philosophy and medicine, artistic and cultural achievements. Paul comes to Athens to proclaim Jesus. And he does so in the exalted court of the Areopagus, which was, as it were, a, uh, a controlling body to perpetuate Greek culture and thought. And Paul proclaims to them the word, Jesus Christ, who is the source of all philosophy, culture, art, beauty, reason, truth. The unknown God who now Paul is making known. This is the church's mission in every age. What motivates her mission? Not popularity or material gain 
but rather charity, the Holy Spirit who lives in the hearts of the faithful, who desire to make the treasure that they have received known to others so that they also may be awakened to faith. This is why the church exists to live in communion with God through the Spirit and to draw others into that same communion. And like Paul, some will readily believe, others will say, I need time to think about it, and others will say, that's nonsense. Some of them will go so far to say, uh, you're so, you're not just simply nonsensical, but you're dangerously so. Because you undermine our sense of power. You want us to surrender it. And that we will not do. In the lives of St. Saints Nereus and Achilles, who belonged to that elite guard, the Praetorian Guard. Not everyone was selected. It was a very um, exclusive group. And they were tasked with the safety of the emperor. For Nereus and Achilles, uh, that emperor was Trajan. But when someone like Paul spoke to them about Jesus, they were awakened to faith by the Spirit working in that word. And they were baptized and proclaimed their first loyalty to Christ. Not for swearing an obedience to the emperor, but a first obedience to Christ to whom the emperor himself was accountable. And this the emperor could not abide. And so he got rid of them. But he didn't get rid of them. They were martyred in the year 98, almost 2,000 years later. Their prayers help to sustain the church, and we honor them today. And thus we see the absolute importance of the Spirit who gives life, without whom there is no life. We ask the prayers of these two martyrs long ago who are still present in the communion of the saints, assisting us, guarding our faith now, that we would be bold and confident to cooperate with that spirit, to witness to Jesus. Let us stand. Created and redeemed by the overflowing love of God, let us offer our praise and thanksgiving. Lord, you have filled the universe with wonders. Fill us each day with reverence and delight in your gifts. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, you have called into being life of every kind. Fill us with a desire to cherish life in all its forms, to uh, advance the well-being of all people. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, you have made us in your own image to be your praise and good stewards of your creation. Fill us each day with thanksgiving and with a desire to take responsibility for the good gifts you've given us. We pray to the Lord. Grant us our prayer, O Lord, for peace in the world for the protection of our service men and women and first responders, for those who've fallen, for the consolation of their families. We pray to the Lord. Grants our prayer, O Lord, 
for God's blessings of unity and peace upon all marriages and families, for an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grants our prayer, O Lord, for all those who are burdened by any need, for the sick and dying, the homeless and unemployed, for widows and orphans, refugees, immigrants, and migrants, for victims of war, violence, natural disasters, persecutions, and human exploitation, for all those who are weighed down by addictions or chronic pain or mental illness, for all the suffering poor, for those suffering the ill effects of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for all those who have died in the hope of resurrection, especially among our family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, and for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day, calling upon the intercession of Saints Nereus and Achilles. We pray to the Lord, grant our prayer, O Lord. O God, our creator and redeemer, you are the author of being and life. Inspire in us a spirit of praise that we may give you glory in everything that we think and say and do. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, <clears throat> look with such serenity and kindness, we pray, O Lord, upon these present offerings, that they may be filled with the blessing of the Holy Spirit and may stir up in our hearts that powerful love through which the holy martyrs, Nereus and Achilles, overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of Elizabeth Siegel. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with Saints Nereus and Achilles, Saint Hugh, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Rule him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. 
Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who join us virtually, we make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. If we have died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. Alleluia. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed by the sustenance of the one bread, O Lord, on the commemoration of the blessed martyrs Nereus and Achilles, we humbly pray that we make that you may confirm us ever in your charity and make us walk in newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together our prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.